Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another episode of Bayani Talk. Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another episode of Bayani Talk. And today we're going to continue with a kind of like a, a sub a sub channel or a sub uh, series on on tournaments. Okay, so one of the things that I love about tournaments is that it's a way for us to really test our skills. And what do I mean by that? Well, stay tuned. But before we get into that, please uh, don't forget don't, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that notification button so that you're alerted anytime there's a, a video dropping in, within Bayani Talk and Filipino Martial Arts School. Let's get right into this. So today we're going to be talking more about tournaments. And one of the things that I wanted to guys talk about, hurting them or just or beating them, what's the difference? So in, in, in tournaments, right... I've always said that tournaments are not a life and death situation. It's not even the closest thing, but it is the next best thing when it comes to, um, you know, being able to check your skills and determine if you if you if you have what it takes or not to be a fighter. So that's very very important to me. But at the same time, we're not here to hurt each other. Okay, we're just here to test our skills. Now, can you get hurt? Obviously, it is it is inevitable that somebody can get hurt. Because it is still full contact martial arts, it's with, with, and especially it's with weapons. You can wear all the safety gear you want, but you can still get very much hurt. Uh, I've been into tournaments where somebody whose hand got broken, even though they're wearing those really thick uh, lacrosse gloves. I've heard of somebody whose jaw got dislocated, um, even though they're wearing that helmet. So it is very, very much possible to still get hurt within the tournament. But is that the goal, to hurt somebody? Let me ask you this. Um... The idea, there's some groups of people that says, you know what, people who wear thigh pads. Now, me personally, my school, we don't wear thigh pads because we don't let the armor be the defense. And, I get, and I'll share another video about that. But we don't let the armor be the defense. But, if, if, you know, but we, don't, we don't tell people not to wear thigh pads. Why? Because there's a very, you know, if you can get hurt there, you can, you can develop blood, blood clots um, and, and get really, really injured, you know, and then somebody could possibly get a stroke or die. So that's a very, very, very important cause. Now, a very important reason. So as a tournament director, and I've, and I've, I've, direct, I've ran a few tournaments in my, in my time now, we, we tell people what is mandatory and we tell people what is optional. And then there is a group of people that don't like the fact that people have an option to wear thigh pads because they say that they can't feel... You know, the person getting hit in the thigh, they can't feel getting hit, so thus they keep moving forward. So there's a couple problems with that. One, um, that's assuming that the judges aren't watching what they're supposed to be watching. Now, are there judges that are more qualified than other judges? Obviously. Are there other judges that can that are that have more experience than others? Obviously. But it is whatever the judges see. So, you know, your perspective from the sidelines as compared to the judges corner. Could be could be very very stark difference between the two, right? But the idea here is that if a judge sees a person getting hit in the thigh, then they should make a mental note of that when it comes to their scoring. Now, if 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 the person who gets hit in the thigh is not moving and is continuously getting hit in the thigh, the judges should also take note of that as well, because that means that person is not showing any defense. They're not learning from their mistakes. Now, the, the argument here is that, well, because they don't feel it, they keep putting it out there. That's not FMA. Getting hit over and over again in the same spot because you're, making, you're opening it for vulner to, to be hit. So it's a vulnerability on your side. That's not Filipino martial arts. That's, that's a lack of defense. So the second thing that I want to talk about that is that when it comes to, you know, if the judge sees it, they should make note of it. But if you're not the one blocking or defending or moving or doing something to prevent you getting hit in the thigh, then that's also on the fighter as well. I think that if a person is hitting you in the leg, you should probably stop. Now, the rules for GSBA and Wake Off is that you can hit anywhere from above the knee all the way to the top of your head. So the thigh is a legal target area. But if you're using your armor as your defense, then you're not doing FMA. But again... If you are also saying that we shouldn't make the thigh pad optional at all because they don't feel it, no, that's too much of a liability. I think that the goal here is to beat your opponent, not to hurt them, not to give them any permanent body damage. It is inevitable sometimes, but that's not the goal. The goal here is to show off your skills, not to show how much you want to hurt somebody. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. What do you guys think? 
Do you think it's important to hurt your opponent or to just beat your opponent? Comment down below. And again, if you please don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe and that notification button so you're alerted to next time we drop another Bayani talk. Until then, my name is Guru Francis. Peace out, God bless, and keep swinging them sticks.